is, uh, my name is Reverend Susanna Curry, and Pastor Kelly Milne is with me this morning in the chancel. Uh, we are going to be celebrating All Saints Day today, as well as our topic for the sermon, and All Saints Day is a day to remember our loved ones who have gone before. So during our time of prayer today, I will be asking you to lift up those who are in the heavens, invite them to join us in spirit and also to remember our love. Coming up on Thanksgiving Sunday, um, the 22nd of November, we're gonna have a sharing service where we share about how God has been unusually real in our lives. And that will be led by Pastor Kelly, and so I invite you to think about that before that comes up. Better? Okay, sorry. Um, and lastly, I just want to remind everyone that on the back of the bulletin, we have our COVID-19 safety protocols. Um, we did do an official measuring. We can have 16 people in the room, and we are below our 16, so we're good. I just want to let everyone out there know we're being safe. Hope you are all being safe as well. So let's begin our worship with our opening hymn, number 132, verses 1 and 4. with us this day and every day, and his word is open and available to us all. Let us please join in the unison call to worship. Love is a positive force. Love changes lives. To know God is to know love. Love describes God perfectly. Love is on the move because God is on the move. Jesus is the living proof that God is love. God's love is unusually real. Love gives us dignity and worth. Amen. Please be seated. So our children talk this morning is our last book in the Zen Pig series. So this one is called Feelings Are Cloud. Another autumn had come. Brilliant leaves were raining down on Zen Pig and the others at the farmer's market spring town. Zen Pig was enjoying every step on the cool, crunchy ground. But then he had to stop because he heard a crying sound. A familiar face, it was then Pig's niece, who had lost her father in the flood. It's okay, climb on, he said, as he knelt at the bottom. Little Pig jumped right up. She knew he'd help her find her way. 
As they walked through the market, she listened to what he had to say. Together we will find your dad, Jen Kate spoke with ease. We all lose our way sometimes. In fact, even me. When we're lost, we can feel things like sadness come around. But know that it is normal. There's no shame in feeling down. Anger too will pay a visit as you continue to journey on. But know that it stays short and soon it will be gone. At times, fear will cast a shadow on your heart and on your mind. Just count your breath in and out, and then your light will shine. Remember what these feelings are, simply rolling clouds in the sky, blocking for just a moment the light you have inside. Your true nature is your joy. Behind the clouds you're seeing. Take comfort. Your light is always there, even when it cannot be seen. A cop is then pushed over. Little Kate could see so much more, even though she had gotten lost. She had found what she was looking for. Just then, her dad was spotted. With love, they came together. But now she knew she could shine, no matter what the weather. And as always, then Kate and Jake share my story. And I always look in the back because within the Lucy is what Kate has been put in. So today's question is. What feeling visited you today? And I don't know what happened, but poor Theo was angry and frustrated, and Zach was mad. <laughs> I'm wondering if they had a little dispute. <laughs> um, so this is the first time I've read this, but as I was reading it, um, I was thinking about, I probably made some people upset on Friday when it was snowing, and I was jumping up and down and so excited. And <laughs> I had people telling me, no, 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 it's too early. Oh, no, I was so happy. And um, Emily and Jen Rainbow Girls, and we had a trunk or treat outside in the snow. I was so happy, and I was dressed as a cow, and there was the cows there, and all these little kids didn't care about the snow. They were it's a cow. It's a cow. So I think this will learn to uh, bring pain to have our feelings. So any new feelings today? The phrase, this too will pass, comes to mind, no matter what the weather. So let us join together in singing hymn number 588, verses 1 and 2.
be seated. Now let us join together in prayer. Dear Lord, you give to each of us the gift of friends and family, the gift of experiences, and places, memories of love throughout our lives. On this day of All Saints Day, we lift up before you the names of those who have gone before, who have changed us, whose love has helped us to grow, whose wisdom has taught us to live our lives seeking your path before us. We give thanks for these saints in our lives, these souls who have given all to bring a good life for themselves and their families into the world. And let us also remember those whose words have been an inspiration to us through the years, those we may not know, but who have, whom we have read about, read their words and their journey, and have been inspired. So that I invite all of us to lift up names of those who are on our hearts, that we might honor them and ring the bell, to call them forth into our hearts in a new way today, that their inspiration may live on and that they may know our love. I'd like to. Sarah Tomei. Rosie Gay. Rosie Lane. Bob Smith. Diana. Diana. Diana McEntee. Leslie Zanino. Laura Stone. Anne Stone. Virginia Erickson. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, bless all these souls who have blessed us with their lives and with their love. And hear us now as we pray in the silence of our hearts. Dear Lord, in these prayers, as in all things, we ask that your divine will be done. Please hear us now as we pray in the words that you've taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let us continue with our affirmation of faith found in your bulletin. And if you would please rise. We worship the one God, the Lord, the Savior, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world, in whom is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose humanity is divine, who for our salvation did come into the world and take our nature upon him. He endured temptation even to the passion of the cross. He overcame the hells and so delivered man. He glorified his humanity uniting it with the divinity of which it was begotten. Without this, no mortal could have been saved, and they are saved who believe in him and keep the commandments of his word. This is his commandment, that we love one another as he has loved us. Amen. And our next hymn is number... 443 verses 1 and 4. Please be seated. Our scriptures for today, our first scripture reading is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 33. And one of the scribes came and heard them questioning together. And knowing that he had answered them well, asked him, What commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. The second is this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, of a truth teacher, thou hast well said that he is one, and there is none other but he. And to love him 
with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And from James chapter 1, 22 through 27. But be doers of the word, and not only hearers of it, blinding yourselves with false ideas. Because if any man is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his natural face in a glass. For after looking at himself, he goes away. And in a short time, he has no memory of what he was like. But he who goes on looking into the true law, which makes him free, being not a hearer without memory, but a doer, putting it into effect, this man will have a blessing on his acts. If a man seems to have religion and has no control over his tongue, but lets himself be tricked by what is false, this man's religion is of no value. The religion which is holy and free from evil in the eyes of our God and Father is this, to take care of children who have no fathers and of widows who are in trouble and to keep oneself untouched by the world. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading and understanding of his word. been examining together Gandhi's seven blunders of the world and looking at how a change in ourselves can make a change in our social environment as well. And today's number six of the seven is religion without sacrifice. And I want to first say one of my favorite quotes from Swedenborg is that the life of religion is to do good. Simply said, not so easily done. But I want to talk a little bit first about the early Christians, because the early Christians were deeply faithful to being able to fulfill the two greatest commandments, to love God and to love the neighbor. They were 
transformed by their faith. They worshiped together. Some were martyred when they were not accepted by the society in which they lived. But those are the ones that are remembered in history. And today I want to talk about just the regular people, just like us. Regular people who have had a taste of God's love and want to model the Lord's behavior in this world. Now those early Christians, they pooled their resources, they donated to others in need, they helped the widows and the orphans, as we heard in the scriptures, they saved babies who had been exposed on, by the roadside when their, their parents didn't want them, and they sought to connect and share with others to worship God, to talk to those who had not heard the word, to share the joy that they had, and they shared it from a place of wonder and love. The wonder inside of themselves that this was a new religion that was forming. This was a new way of looking at loving the neighbor and loving in the world. And religion is what brings people and God together. I'd like to read this from Emanuel Swedenborg's book, The Heavenly City. When one religious era ends, the Lord begins a new one. The Lord makes sure there is always religion on earth, since religion is what brings the Lord and the human race together. It also brings heaven and the world together. Through religion, we know about the Lord, and we learn divine truth that brings us closer to him. So in the early Christian days, they sought to have this experience of community and loving one another because they knew that that's what the Lord wanted of them. That's what the Lord showed them, living with his disciples and traveling with them to spread the word of love in the world. Now, I had an experience of communal living when I was 19. And in this microcosm of, and Dean was there, so yes, he was laughing, it was a lot of fun. But in this microcosm of all the different ways in which we can be in community, the group of us between five and 12 people over the course of time, we're committed to each other, committed to sharing with one another. We shared our resources. We didn't know any widows and orphans at the time, but we helped other people who were in need. And we came together for a cause, and that cause happened to be the Good Day Market, which was a natural foods co-op. So we were together in our belief in eating good foods and also in working cooperatively with one another. And that became what I would call nowadays a family of choice. It was a place where we felt we belonged, we helped one another, um, we shared things. We, you know, when one person's car broke down, the, another person would do the, the carpooling. But it was an experience in my life that I think really prepared me to be part of a spiritual community. You know, that, that experience that was based on a love of religion, but it, the, the love shared together made me want more of that. Now, I have three children. Some people did tease me that when I left the commune, I wanted to raise my own. I said, that's what families are, small communal living. But the more we reach out from that experience of love that we learn by being with one another and sharing, and sharing meals and sharing learning and sharing recreation time, we realize how joyful it is to do that. And we reach out into larger and larger spheres. I know many of us belong to groups where we do activities together. And we do it for the joy of community. That we learn from these communal experiences that we are a human race. We are all connected. And moving forward from the times that we've been sharing these last nine months with COVID, I think we have recognized how important it has been that we recognize it through our loss, the loss of the activities that we've been able to participate in. I want to remind us all what a great blessing and privilege it is that we can be here together because we have a, a space where we can be six to 12 feet apart. This is a wonderful blessing because to be in community with each other means we are sharing the love of God. We're learning in our world today that churches in their current 
configuration are very sparsely attended. And it's not just from COVID. It's because people are not necessarily finding community in church as the way that they want to live. I think that we need to recognize how important our spiritual life is before we can seek out new ways to be in community. There's an unknown ahead of us. How will we do church? What will church look like? How can we stay open to the Lord's call to be in relationship with one another? And sometimes it means we're going to have to make sacrifices. To be safe in our church bubble, all of us are sacrificing going out and doing many things during the week because we know we want to be safe to be here. We look around and the world around us is competing with religion. So we perhaps have to sacrifice some material things to be here on a Sunday morning. And perhaps to be in spiritual community, we need to sacrifice some things that are not good for us. Things like our p political discord and our intellectual disputes and economic inequalities and racial prejudices and unfairness and unkindness. That's something we need to give up, and I hope it won't feel like a sacrifice. It's my hope that that will feel like the right thing to do. We talk about sacrifice as giving something up, but what about giving up our anger and our judgment, our greed and our selfishness, and then it will be the fertile ground in which we can spiritually grow and feel our responsibility to others over our self, selfish needs, and then we will be wanting to give and give more. We know about the story of the widow's mite and how she gave a small amount, but percentage-wise, it was all she had. And how does that compare spiritually to someone with great wealth giving a great amount of money, which they might not feel at all? It's what their intention is that when, they, when it is said to give until it hurts, until it is a sacrifice, means give what is meaningful to you. And this is how the early Christians gave, gave to one another. Mother Teresa said in a speech that she gave at the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. in 1994, said, it is not enough for us to say, I love God, but I also have to love my neighbor. St. John says that you are a liar if you say you love God and you don't love your neighbor. How can you love God whom you do not see if you do not love your neighbor whom you see, whom you touch, with whom you live? And so it is very important for us to realize that love, to be true, has to hurt. I must be willing to give whatever it takes not to harm other people and, in fact, to do good to them. This requires that I be willing to give until it hurts. Otherwise, there is no true love in me, and I bring injustice, not peace, to those around me. For myself, I have to say, giving until it hurts comes to my mind when I'm watching my grandchildren. <laughs> because sometimes they totally exhaust me, and I want to go lay down and take a nap. But they're not ready for that. They want to run around. They want to play. They want to do something. And it does hurt a little to keep my energy up, to keep going. But I love them so much that I postpone that collapse until they leave. I know that this is not a world in which it, sacrifice is honored and appreciated. When you give more than you actually have the energy for or the inclination to. But we all can, um, I, I have to quote a Jerry Garcia song, we all can um, try just a little bit harder we all can do just a little bit more. We all have the capability to love more than we know. And this is who God knows us to be. God knows that that's inside of us. And we only have to look for the opportunities. You know, if we are driving and we see that someone has broken down and they look distraught, well, maybe you aren't going to feel inspired to necessarily stop, but you could call 911 and, and make sure that they know that someone's there. 
everyone's going to decide for themselves how much they can give. And I just want to say, it doesn't always hurt. Sometimes it's a great joy, but it, the sacrifice in it, the willingness to put someone else above yourself and your own needs, that's what the sacrifice is. Simply recognizing someone else needs something now, and I could be of help, I could serve them, I could do something that they need. And that that is the kind of love that God is inspiring in us with this greatest of commandments. And it's in the Bible so many times. It's not something that is just important when, when you read it once. It's important to live it, to live it again, to live it again, and to look inside yourself to say, okay, what can I do here? What am I called to do? And as this giving season is approaching, I, I'm, I'm sure all of you are getting many solicitations in the mail. It's a season for people reaching out for help. And we can't do everything. We, none of us can answer every single thing. Although I have to say, my parents really try. <laughs> They've got a whole lot of list of people that they donate to. But what we need to decide is what's important to us. Is it important to us to help feed the hungry? Is it, help, is it important to us to help um, children who are in need or people with medical conditions? And do something, just something that you can do. And maybe a little more. And maybe a little more. You could make it a contest. See how much you can give from your time and resources, and just to get a feeling for, well, when does it hurt? When is it too much and it's hard? But then just feel the grace that you've done that, the grace that you have followed the Lord's lead. You have given the Lord what he wants, which is to, for us to be a human family and to take care of one another and to be mindful of those that we meet and allow ourselves to be God's hands God's love and God's wisdom in this world. We are a world where as many are hurting and there are help is needed. Leanne? I wanted to just share a quote. Sure. Can you take your mask off just briefly? You're far enough away, I think. Lovely. If you have knowledge, let others light their candles in it. That's beautiful. And who is that from? Margaret Fuller. Margaret Fuller. Thank you. Yeah, that is perfect. That's right. Let our light shine and let others light their candles from it. But this is how the world spreads light and life and more joy, more the joy of living. For even the littlest thing is appreciated by an open heart. And I hope that when you are in need, that you open your heart to receive from others as well. So let us take a moment of reflection, and just allow the Lord to speak with you what it is that you can give, where to direct your energy, where to shine your light. And let us remember that the life of religion is to do good. Amen. We'll now take our offering for the work of the church.
accept these gifts from our hearts, that they be a blessing in the lives of all those whom they touch, and may you guide each one of us in how to be, be able to find the places in which our light can shine and bring a blessing to others. Amen. And let us join singing hymn number 440, verses 1 and 4. Let us join now in our closing song. We'll sing it through three times. Please be seated. 